guys, it's Jessie V, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about some of the world's creepiest insane asylums. These were places that were shut down, abandoned, and for very good reasons. These places were not a good place to be back then. Before I get started though, you probably heard in my previous videos that I have launched a V Team membership club in Jessie V World, where you get exclusive events, exclusive videos, all kinds of amazing awesome stuff, and I have posted my first member only exclusive video. This is a creepy story time about something really weird that Ty and I caught on our backyard security cameras. I don't know if it's aliens, creatures, ghosts, humans or what it was but we have it on tape and so I did a whole story time and I showed the footage so you guys can let me know what you think. So if you want to see this member only video I have linked it down below. This is never going to be on YouTube or anywhere else just in Jesse V world. So if you want to see it link down below. Also just to give you some updates on what is happening on our merch website. Ty has just launched a tie dye plushy ocean line and they're so cute. They're all tie dye of course. So we have our octopus. I I love the colors. They're so bright and fun. We've got our hammerhead shark. I love the blue and green. And look at his little mouth. He's so cute. And we have the stingray. And this is actually the softest one. And I love these colors as well. So if you'd like any of these tie-dye sea animals, I have put them down below in the description for you. All right, guys, without further ado, let's get right into today's video. The first place we're talking about is the Willard Asylum for the Chronically Insane. This place was built in 1866 in New York, it was divided into male and female wings, and the male side was further segmented into violent and non-violent sections. Back then, mental illness was just not understood at all. There was a girl in here who had been chained to her cell since she was a toddler, and another girl arrived inside of a chicken crate. Like her parents thought she was crazy, put her inside a tiny little chicken crate, and shipped her off to this asylum. And what's so strange is that as awful as this place was, it had a bowling alley, it had a movie theater, it had a ton of crafting classes, so I guess they thought like, hey, if we're treating people badly, at least they have these fun things to do. They would also give patients freezing baths to calm them down. Like imagine you're having a panic attack, you're freaking out, you have anxiety, and one of your friends or your parents are like, just take an ice bath. Why haven't you thought of that? I'd be like, that would make me feel so much worse. It is estimated that about 25,000 patients died there. It closed down in 1995 and the hospital cemetery is the final resting place of thousands of unclaimed bodies buried in unmarked graves. And what is so sad and eerie is that after the hospital's closure, cleaning staff stumbled upon hundreds and hundreds of old suitcases up in the attic and they were just filled with personal belongings from all of those patients who went there. Things like stuffed animals, lockets, photo albums, toys, journals. It was so sad to see all of it because these people thought they were going for a temporary stay. They did not think they were going to die there. Next we have Ganjam Psychiatric Hospital. It was built in 1982 in South Korea, but it didn't last very long. In July of 1996, it closed down and was left abandoned. It gained a reputation for ghosts and creepy rumors began to spread about what really happened there. There. According to legend, many patients died mysteriously, forcing the hospital to shut down permanently. Some believe the deaths were caused by the hospital's owner, who was accused of keeping the patients hostage. It's said that the hospital's owner fled to America after the victim's families and government authorities began investigating these unexplained deaths. Another story says that the doctors and directors were driven to madness while working alongside the mentally ill patients, which led the director to end his own life. And some believe that his death was caused by a ghost who possessed his body and drove him to the brink of insanity. And the many other ghosts that haunt Ganjam's abandoned halls are the victims of the psychotic doctors and murderous owner. And while the hospital is closed for the living, the former patients of Ganjam are trapped forever in this place where they all met their gruesome end. Now apparently the true story is that business at Ganjam Psychiatric Hospital actually came to an end because of finances and 
and not mad doctors. Because of these really scary rumors though, the hospital is constantly getting trespassed by curious visitors, ghost hunters, and a horror movie was even made about this place. The release of the popular movie Ganjim Haunted Asylum only increased curiosity surrounding the hospital. Ty and I actually watched this movie last year and it is really terrifying. It's about these ghost hunters who go there with their cameras hoping to catch something scary. It reminds me of like paranormal activity or something. I would not watch it again. It was pretty scary. And then lastly, we have Ospedale Psychiatrico di Volterra. I'm so sorry, I just butchered that. But this hospital was built in 1888 and grew to become one of the largest asylums in Italy. It held 6,000 patients at once with 20 sinks and two toilets for every 200 patients. So they definitely did not have enough things for everybody. And it shut down in 1978 after its practices were deemed cruel. It was infamous for its electroshock therapy and there are reports that patients were tied to their beds in straitjackets, and the letters from their families were actually hidden from them, which is so sad. Iron bars were on all of the windows and doors, and spy holes were actually on all of the doors, which showed you that they were monitored 24-7. Someone was always watching them. The walls of the hospital courtyard are still covered in the carvings of a patient who was locked inside for more than a decade. His name was Oreste Ferdinand Nanetti, and he drew mysterious runes, symbols and letters just scratched into the walls along with poems, drawings, and names, and he scratched all of these things all day long into the plaster. It didn't matter if it was morning or night, if it was raining or sunshine, he was always out there carving really strange things into the walls. And the marks in the stone wall have mystified photographers, historians, and psychiatrists for years. Many interpret his work as a manual on how to cope with hallucinations, and some say they are ramblings about high tech weaponry, spaceships, and magic. So yeah, as you can tell, all of these places have a really eerie history and people say they're haunted. And I mean, the reason why the most haunted places around the world are asylums and hospitals is because so many people went there and died there under really awful circumstances. Anyways, guys, obviously there are so many asylums around the world. If you want me to do a part two, give this video a thumbs up and let me know. And don't forget if you would like any of the new tie-dye sea creatures or you wanna watch the new story time that I have in Jesse V World, Everything is linked down below, but I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!